Dr. Moody to jump in. I know that he was almost there. Hey, buddy. Justin. Let's see. Uh, hold on. I can't hear you. Hello, hello. Justin. Sound check. One, one, one. Justin, you got this. Hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. How about you? Awesome. Sound yeah. check is working. Yeah, you're you're in. Sorry about that. Uh, Kept telling me uh, it was uh, another day late or day early. <clears throat> that was on our end. Uh, right. We had some challenges. By now, we should probably figure out how webinars should work, right? There's no excuse yeah. for that. Uh, nah. But we always run oh. into some stuff. Yeah, for sure, man. How you been? Yeah, I've been good. I've been good. Uh, we're back to work today, so we're we're in great shape. That's awesome. I'm trying to see when you and I talked. For some reason, it's not loading. I think it was like three March twenty fourth, or like twenty no twenty fifth on my birthday. I remember yeah, now. Yeah, it was uh, it was a while ago. Wednesday, yeah. So a lot has happened since then. A lot of Peloton miles. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I think uh, just about twelve hundred minutes of a Peloton hours for me. Or, wow. uh, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's how many in miles? Uh, let's see here. Um, let me look at the old Peloton app. Um, they have an app? Yeah, they do. It It's not nearly as good for um, uh, Android users as it is for um, uh, Apple users, but it's... Uh, I'll keep my comments. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm a. <clears throat> I'd rather have a shitty Peloton app than a superior phone. Than, uh, um, but uh, oh, uh, just about. I rode about seven hundred and some miles. So, wow, that's a lot of miles. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. What's what was your routine like? You would get up, have some water, jump uh, on the bike. Well, for today, you know, the routine was. I usually rode in the afternoon. There's a uh, Facebook group of dentists that are Peloton uh, owners that uh, we'd usually we usually get together and all have a ride together. And now that uh, you know, uh, I'd say better than half of the group is back to work, so um, it's not nearly as uh, easy as it was. Uh, I rode at six a.m. this morning, so I, I'm back into my old routine of. Uh, I get up at 5.45, I ride uh, from 6 to 6.30, uh, make some breakfast, take a shower, uh, drive to work, uh, did our morning huddle this morning, and uh, uh, felt good to have structure and uh, felt good to have structure and routine back in my life. Yeah. How was it in the office? Like, how do you dealing with, you know, the team and getting everybody back on track and all that? Well, you know, today is the first day that uh, here in Arizona, well, Friday was our first day, but uh, we decided we weren't going to do anything till Monday. And um, uh, even today, we're not seeing any patients today. So we had, um, uh, we just finished this morning with, uh, uh, you know, a welcome back, like, how did everybody do? You know, everybody's good. Uh, um, all smiling faces, like everyone was ready to go back to work. There was no... Uh, I don't want to do this. Uh, you know, I want to stay on unemployment. Like everybody's like, yeah, let's get back to work. Um, went over, you know, our new, uh, you know, patient intake process, you know, right. We went from having 20 chairs in the waiting room to I think four mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they're hugely spaced out. We got markers on the, uh, the floors to keep people away. We got plexiglass up, uh, hand sanitizing stations. And then we, you know, throughout this morning, we went over the, you know, the new routines of, you know, 
bringing patients in, getting them to the chairs, you know, taking the vitals. Now we're doing temperatures and pulses, pulse ox on everybody to uh, try to assess their, their, their general condition. And then, uh, you know, how we're going to do, you know, how we're going to use our PPE and, you know, what stages on what people and how do we preserve it and, uh, <clears throat> You know, all the way down to, you know, our new screening processes. We've got some new employees. we got some that didn't come back. we got some new ones. Uh, uh, then this afternoon, thankfully, I don't have to be involved with it. Uh, uh, they're doing their OSHA and HIPAA uh, recertifications. And then at 4 o'clock is the um, uh, CPR recertification. So, <laughs> you know, we want to, before we go back to seeing patients on Tuesday, we wanted to get a lot of those things out of the way that now that we've brought everybody back, um, you know, I just want to get those housekeeping things out of the way, you know, making, spent the morning talking, you know, getting people, uh, uh, making sure everybody had their immunizations and had those on record. And those that <clears throat> have a couple that are, we're going to send through x-ray training tech school. And I just, uh, yeah, you know, there's 20 some of us here. So it takes a little time to get everybody back up and, uh, up, up and running, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, as you were planning like a week ago or two weeks ago, if you can take us through your process, you know that at some point you're going to get open or reopen. Um, and I know we've extensively talked about this last time about taking this time, uh, you know, to get ready. And now did you do your own research on the PPE requirements, the CDC guidelines and what do you need to do and things like that? Or you put somebody in charge to do it and then how it was done for your 20 people team? Uh, you know, I <clears throat> I left it up to the the clinic director here, Dr. Kieber, and then uh, Dr. Vorholt. Uh, uh, you know, I, I sent them the links from the ADA and the CDC. And then obviously uh, when we got the governor's mandate down from uh, 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 here in Arizona, you know, the, then the board, you know, stepped in and clarified some things and uh, told us what we needed to do. And, uh, uh, we took those guidelines and probably went just a little bit above, you know, and because uh, uh, really it's a lot of, like, the team doesn't feel, uh, this team here anyway, I, I you know, you, you look on social media, which I've just kind of avoided here lately, uh, you know, there's a lot of confusion on it and there's a lot of people that are scared to go back to work. And I think that those things... Um, I don't know how much of that is valid. I think that what we were doing to begin with was safe. That's why none of us were, that's why none of us, you know, that's why none of us have been sick. That's why none of us got sick is that we were doing the right things to begin with. Uh, now we're doing them just a little bit differently, but uh, you know, maybe there's just heightened, heightened awareness of it is really what it is, but uh, we were doing the right things to begin with. So um, uh, everybody feels great about coming back to work. Uh, we did, um, uh, we did delay hygiene opening, so uh, and we're not even sure when we're going to bring that back. Truthfully, we're we kind of have a little soft opening right now. We're we're seeing new patients. We're still seeing emergencies and delivering some things that we needed to. Uh, we're not going to dive into crowns and fillings and stuff uh, for another probably about ten days, and then uh, we'll probably wait another two or three weeks before we bring the hygiene team back. Um, uh, now this nonprofit clinic's a little bit different, you know. The the uh, the the hygiene system that we have is uh, not like a private practice, you know. The many of our patients uh, we edentulated through the implant courses, so there's, you know, not not all of them have a. Uh, they still need implant hygiene, but not like you know real teeth and cavitrons and things like that. Um, uh, but we're just kind of waiting on that a little bit because we can, because we don't have as nearly as big a backlog as uh, uh, the rest. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of getting opened up. And uh, it's also a matter of getting the rest of the, 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 the community open back up, too, because people need to go back to work to have a sense of, I'm going to get a paycheck so that I can pay for this dentistry. Like, there's a there's more to it than... I think uh, dentistry is wrapped up in, uh, you know, the fear of the PPP, PPE and, and, you know, what the patient's perception and stuff and all those things are important. But uh, I think if you step back and take a look at 
what the patient has experienced on the other side is like they may or may not have been unemployed. They may or may not have had a paycheck for a while other than maybe some unemployment. Um, you know, there's there's con there's continued fear mongering of we're going to have a second wave, like we're going to get shut down again, like all those things. And and uh, there's no there's no science, you know, to that. There's no uh, uh, nobody said those things. So at some point, you know, people are going to have to start getting on with living. And I think when you think about getting on with living, uh, uh, one of the one of the requirements is eventually you're going to have to decide whether it's safe or not to go outside or go to the grocery store or go down to the hardware store or now are you going to go down to the brew house, you know, and have a beer with your friends you haven't seen for two months? Uh, uh, are you going to go to Top Golf again when they open? Like, you know, all those things. And, and everyone's got a different level. And, and, and one asks, what we have to do as people and dentists, we have to respect, we have to respect people's uh, position. You know, mm -hmm. just because I may be a little more cavalier and not as uh, not as afraid or whatever, doesn't mean that the the rest of the people aren't, and and that doesn't discount that fact. Like if you um, if you minimize their worries, then you're doing a disservice to them. So um, you know, everybody's got their own their own deal, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like your approach. Um, I don't want to go too deep on this, but. From day one, from I think like the March, I never been active on Facebook, to be honest, in right. the last especially two years. But then especially when this whole thing started, I'm like, I just deleted the app from my phone, never went in. People were sending me links, but I'm like, just not interested. I know it's going to be, um, I don't want to say the word, but you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know, I, yeah. I did yeah. it. And I, um, I, I told myself, you know, I'll, I'll hop on and try to see a few good things. Uh, but, you know, at, um, I haven't gone on to the, the dental hacks or, you know, any of those other groups because it's a. Um, and nothing wrong it, about the groups, right, themselves. The people behind them are phenomenal people. Oh, it's just, for sure. yeah, it's it's just a water cooler of the whole thing became too negative, I think. And there was nothing positive. Yeah. And, and there's, you know, based on little facts and then, you know, people you know, politicize it, you know, like, you know, you got to side with me. And I, I don't, I don't understand where in our nation we, I don't understand where we got to a point where if you and I differ on an opinion, we can't be friends anymore. Like, I, mm -hmm. like I, like I just don't understand this. And I thought maybe we would get away. I uh, thought we would go away from this. Do you remember when Ellen DeGeneres, um, I uh, ended up going to that baseball game with uh, President Bush. I don't know if you yeah. remember that, but like, yeah, she was persecuted me. She's like, "Oh my God, you went to you went to a baseball game with a Republican, you know, and you're a, a Democrat, and he stands for all the things you don't." And she went on her show and just said, "Hey, listen, like, like I'm friends with a lot of people that don't see the world like I do, and it doesn't doesn't make them wrong or right. It just makes them who they are, and you know why." Why does that mean I can't be friends with them or go somewhere? Like that, that's it's stupid. And I and and somehow this is uh, you know the world has gotten even worse about this. Mm -hmm. And I I just and that's where the toxicity of Facebook comes. You know, like uh, you know you you know you you know some people talk about the COVID and some people talk about COVID is Trump's fault or it's not his and you know, he's greatest thing. And it's like I don't really care. Or like like like. Like if that's your opinion, you know, you have the right, uh, you know, you have the right to go to the voting booth in November and make your own decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't need to tell everybody what I'm going to do. I'm just yeah. going to go. Do it. You know, yeah. that's my, you know, that's my sit. That's the right I have of being a U.S. citizen is to go to the, uh, go to the voting booth and and, and pull the handle for who I want and, um, uh, you know, and I'll live with the, I'll live with the consequences one way or the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well. What what are the positive things that you've seen, like in this since you and I you and I talked and you know there we knew it's going to be a lot of political stuff and people are sensitive but I I want to look back in the last month and a half and and what are the things that even surprised you, you know I know that you're a very positive person you I mean it's really hard to get you down, but like what what did you look at and you said wow this is interesting I did not expect that. 
Um, you know, I didn't anticipate the amount of naysayers, uh, the doomsday preppers. Uh, and, um, you know, you can look at it as uh, like, okay, well, this virus has ruined my livelihood. It's ruined this. It's ruined that. Well, you know, like, listen, it's a little bit, it's out of your control, you know, so you can either spend all your time on Facebook saying, oh, woe is me or blaming someone or you can say, hey, you know what, listen, like I'm going to use this time to make myself better. You know, for me, I, you know, I concentrated on my health. I concentrated on uh, courses. I concentrated on creating content and, uh, you know, creating social media pieces that were um, devoid of all the bullshit and just like, hey, like can't wait to go back. You know, I did some did a ton of webinars, did a ton of Zoom meetings and um, you know, and, and, we, and we were prepared for today. Like the, the, what I, uh, uh, what I find inspiring is that every one of the people that came back to work today was excited. You know, like there was nobody that was like, yeah, nobody was there like, ah, oh, you know, like I'm scared, you know, or, you know, I was making more money on unemployment. No, I think people are, people are social people and we want to go back to work to see people like, um, I didn't say anything, but it's, been heard that uh, most of them gave each other hugs when they saw each other like that i know it's not social distancing but, <laughs> but, but you know what i'm saying like like they're like they were yeah. happy to see each other and, and they yeah. cared about each other and those are the those are the important things uh and as i watched as i watched each person come into the room you know and you hadn't seen them well we hadn't seen them in since uh, uh let me look at my calendar here. We shut operations down March. We shut operations down March 20th, right before uh, uh, you and I. Wow, that's uh, early on. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we shut it down before. You and I talked, what, on the 25th on your birthday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we shut down, I think, that Friday before. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, you know, so everybody been almost six weeks. That's you know, a lot of time. It is a lot of time. You know, like, like you think about like taking a break at Christmas or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're like, uh, you hadn't seen somebody for a week, and it's like catching up. Here, it's funny because there's not a lot of catch up. Like, hey, what'd you do or whatever? Well, fuck, nobody did anything. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, like, 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 you know, if I did something, like, you probably saw it on Facebook. Like, everybody knows what I, you know, what I did or what I didn't do. Uh, uh, hell, I'm even crazy enough, and I know you have too. Uh, you know, I've been flying. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I had to. I had no choice. Yeah, you know, hell, the place is a ghost town. Like, you're, you're more, you're more apt to get the, you're more apt to get this virus at a grocery store or at Costco than you are on an airplane today. Like, there's, you know, there's, there's nobody in the airports. There's nobody on the airplanes. There's you know, there's very few flights, you know, uh, I felt uh, as I landed last night in uh, uh, here in Phoenix, um, there's about 100 uh, Southwest and American Airlines and Alaska Airlines planes parked on this one runway. And I was like, it made me pretty sad um, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, we know about what this has done to dentistry and uh you know most states have allowed dentists to go back to work in some capacity now uh um but those airlines i think people don't realize that they do a lot more than haul people around you know the underside of, you know the top side of the airplane is full of people the bottom side is full of the u.s mail service it's full of cargo uh that's going from one business to another and uh <clears throat> all those planes sitting there not being used as you know not only jobs but commerce that is that 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 got stopped and won't be easy to turn Get off. The it's, it's, mm -hmm. not a, it's not a light switch, you know, like it's gonna <clears throat> that's gonna take some doing. And I think people realize I don't think people understand that this is not gonna be an overnight fix. You know, mm -hmm. the economy wise, uh, you know, like we're going to do our part, but uh, I don't think we need to get too carried away because there's some, I think there's some rougher, I, th I think there's some, I don't say rough time, I think there's some more challenging times ahead of us, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll go back to it. Yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah, exactly. 
in as a leader of multiple organizations, right? So you're running the dental clinic. You have one in South Dakota. You have one in Tempe, Arizona. You have the the implant pathway. You have the podcast. I mean, you're involved in so many different things. As a leader, the two things is how do you how do you look ahead? Because I think that's what we need to do as leaders. And then the second is how do you communicate to your team and and how that communication look like for you? Well, <clears throat> you know the the you know leading your team right now is just a matter of you know just just being you and staying calm. You know, like uh, uh, you know what I think that that is the biggest disservice that's being done today is through the is, is the national media, uh, no matter what source that you look at, and it's. Uh, if you think about it, they need to incite clicks. Like they need you to click their article. They need you to listen to their article. And the only way that we listen to that article is for them to make some old statement, you know, that uh, catches our eye. And, you know, what we really need is someone to just stand up there and say, hey, you know what, this is going to be fine. Like, you're like, we're going to get through this. And, you know, there's going to be some uh, you know, some unfortunate consequences of, you know, of, of death and, and, and hospitalizations and things. But, uh, you know, that, you know, instead of, uh, concentrating on the 0.5% of the people that have these issues, how about the, how about the 99.5% of the people that, you know, uh, survive, you know, COVID and, uh, are, are going to return to being just, you know, being just fine. So part of being a leader is to disseminate information that you know to be true in our world and that uh, uh, what they can do is count on you. Because we don't really know, you know, there's not, not a lot of science being talked about. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, things seem to change, you know, uh, day by day. And if you're a business owner that has taken out a PPP loan, like those rules have changed about every five minutes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, uh, you know, so those things aren't even worth talking about because about the time you spit it out of your mouth, like it's, it's, it's different. But what I can tell you is like, uh, you know, we're going to go to work. We're going to stay, we're going to, we're going to stay safe ourselves. We're going to keep our patients safe. We're going to do the needed dentistry that our patients need and they've needed us and they're backed up and there's some toothaches and a lot of decay and implants that need to be done. And we're going to do those things and we're going to navigate whatever, you know, we're going to hop whatever hurdle that come that we, we, that we face, you know, the next time we turn another corner. So um, uh, that is, you know, that's just a message that they need to know is that there's, you know, that, that there's, it's not bad. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Well, it's different. We don't have really a problem. It's just a different, different set of circumstances. Yeah, it's interesting. Even like the phrase that we all use, going back to normal. Like, why we always want to go back? Like, we need to look forward. For sure, you know. Like, I, I am. There's a couple of phrases that I'm about. I'm about tired of. You know, one is you know these uh, unprecedented times. You know, well, every every day is unprecedented from the day before. Mm -hmm. You know, like like that's a dumb term, you know, and the and the new norm. Well, you know, if you live if you live in the normal and you never want change, then you're not ever going to grow anyway. So uh, every you know, there should be never a new normal. Like you should you know, like you should you should you should be recreating yourself every day. So uh, uh, you're not going to catch me finding you know trying. I'm not you're not going to catch me saying too much. Uh, well, this is the new normal. Well. The new normal is maybe the new standard that we have today. Some heightened PPE, you know, some distancing, hand sanitizing, like all these things. But some of those things we may still be using in six months. Some of those things like science may come and say, yeah, like it's not nearly as aerosol as we thought it was. Down go the down, you know, down go the plexiglass barriers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we may go back to the same masks we used before. Like there's, we don't know. And that doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do what somebody tells. I mean, they're good. We're going to do what, you know, the, the guidelines people, are going to be. Yeah. The guidelines are going to be, you know, whether we like it or not. I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, you can't fight it. I mean, there's no reason to, you know, there's no reason to do something stupid and end up in an orange jumpsuit. You know, like there's uh, you know, like, you know, I, I got, yeah. you know, no reason. Yeah. Speaking of which, like, how do you think, 
because uh, there's a, there's some talk that I heard that you know the PPE should be reimbursed by insurance companies. ADA need to step up with what they're doing. You and I had a really good discussion on the whole ADA thing last time. Like if you're a dentist, and especially I'm a little worried for you know the the the, the startup dentist because you know you just started out, you just getting your feet wet, and now the PPE costs. I mean. When I get offices now sign, signing up or doing the demos, um, they're like, so Tiger, you're a big 4% guy, like making sure that we're in 4%. I'm like, you know what, honestly, forget about this for now. So that, or I hope that I'm going to get you to five, six, seven, like six with a current right. PPE cost. But like, it's just what we have to deal with. You know, like when we realistically can focus on five again, we will, if it happens. If it's not, it's not. It's just going to be something that we'll have to work with. But I'm worried about the the private practices and the startup dentists that just started out uh, some are doing phenomenal i've talked to some of them some are doing some are struggling and i think a lot of it is you know overextending yourself a little bit uh, financially some others didn't overextend they're doing a little bit better but like if you're a young dentist and if you're looking at this whole mess like what what playstation would you have in your head well <clears throat> You know, you're 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 young for a reason, and and you know, history hasn't told you too much yet. Uh, I don't know if we talked last time or not, but uh, you know, I uh, you know, I've been a dentist through 9/11. I was a dentist through uh, the 08 09, you know, downturn in the in, in the economy, and uh, you know, I learned a few things along the way, and. Uh, you know, each time or is that, uh, you know, there's some things within business that you should get done, lines of credit, you know, savings account for yourself, uh, you know, some retirements. And, you know, I'm a, you know, the profession that I do is implants. And that also is a modality in dentistry, which generally lends itself to higher um, uh, overhead expenses because we have cone beam CTs and scanners and, you know, implant inventory and things, which, which, which throw those normal, you know, like there's a, like, well, how much should you spend on supplies? Well, uh, if you don't do anything crazy, you know, maybe that four or 5%, you know, but uh, uh, if you, if you place a lot of implants in your practice, like, like you may not have much choice, but to have a little higher, uh, you know, overhead and higher supplies and it depends on how you, you categorize those in your, uh, uh, you know, in your cash flow. But uh, there's, um, uh, I think the best piece of advice is like, you know, just try not to get out over your skis because, you know, you, you come out of dental school and you, you find a good practice and you start making some good money. And then all of a sudden you're like, I bought this, I bought this big, beautiful home. And now I've got this big, beautiful dental practice. And now I got an Audi in the, in the, in the driveway and like all these things. And then you get a downturn and you get something to happen like this. And you're like, Oh shit. You know, like, like I can't make all these payments. Like I, I'm, how am I going to create 20,000 a month in disposable income? Like I, 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 I just don't have that. Well, you know, it, there's there's no there's no help in that right now like you're not there's nobody that's going to help you do that there's nobody that's going to loan you the money other than you know these these sba type loans so it's a uh uh there will be some there will be some people that their current business model isn't going to work you know mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they'll feel a financial hardship and i think what people need to realize is that the financial hardships uh you know i you know, something not everybody probably knows this, but I, I started a teaching institute in downtown Denver in 2010, and I ended up closing it in 2014. And uh, I left uh, millions of dollars downtown Denver. And I remember, you know, I was consulting bankruptcy attorneys and looking at that and people are, you know, and, and there were some people that were, you know, concerned that I was like, you know, if it was, if I was mentally stable enough, you know, like, concerned for my well-being and i've always been a, like oh you know what um yeah you know, i'm certainly not going to kill myself over this it's you know uh, uh a financial a financial crisis is a financial crisis and if you don't if your business doesn't survive it doesn't survive but like you did and you can uh you can rebuild yourself and uh uh you can come back through you just have to go back to work you just gotta you know you just gotta uh 
go back to work and work hard and have a better plan. And hopefully history was instructive enough to you at what failed that the next time you do it, you, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you cinch that up. And what I learned was, man, I built a Taj Mahal on the 16th street mall in downtown Denver. I paid, you know, 40 some dollars a square foot to be in there, like all these things. And then today, you know, we're in a, um, uh, we found a we found a space in Tempe that had once been a nine chair dental clinic that had been at, vacant for a few years. We didn't have the build out, uh, you know. It's now now we're in that sixteen dollars a square foot instead of forty, and and uh, so yeah, you know the 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 equipment isn't brand new, the cabinets aren't brand new, but you know what? There isn't a patient that cares uh, because the dental work that they get and the and the education the doctors are getting here is second to none. And, uh, that's what allowed us to weather the storm, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, today I, I'm not as nearly as materialistic as I used to be. Uh, you know, I, uh, um, you know, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a nice house and a car that's paid for. And, um, that's, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, my, my, my kids stayed safe through the thing. So like, 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 I don't really have any worries, man. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's interesting when you look back at it. Um, uh, certainly like my generation, we, you know, we have a very interesting perspective on money and life. And, um, but I certainly think that this might be the, the reset button for a lot of people as far as like, you know, do not everybody should be the practice owner. I've talked about it from my first business when we were building dental offices in Chicago, when I was trying to talk people out of owning a practice back in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, when I owned the business. And I was, that was my, one of the first question is like, do you think, are you sure? Cause a lot comes like when the times are good, everybody wants to jump on it. Right. When the times are rough, it's a rough sailing. So that was just my idea of trying to help people. But I, I think with this current thing, it's also going to make some people rethink uh, if the practice ownership is for them. Well, you know that, um, you know, the corporate dentistry is, is different than owning your own shop. And uh, the, the power of corporate dentistry is all those things, you know, uh, uh, marketing on a global scale and uh, buying sundries at a, at a, you know, at a much better, uh, uh, you know, at a much better rate, and the and the and the opportunity of recruiters and all you know, all these things that they use. And <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, I got a lot of good friends that we've trained, and and uh, they're even mentors that here at Pathway uh, that uh, work for one of these DSOs. And I'll tell you that um, the majority of the private practice dentists that I know don't make what these guys do at the DSOs. And uh, now do they work really, really hard and not don't have as more of a, it's more of an eight to five Monday through Friday job than the Wednesday afternoon off to, to golf and no Fridays. Like, yeah, but um, you know, there's opportunity in whatever system that you put yourself into. And if you're not, you know, if running a business and doing your own marketing and thing is, is, you know, if you're not trained to do that and you and you and that's not something that you enjoy, uh, but you enjoy being a dentist, like there's a lot of avenues for you to, to choose. Mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. have I, I agree with you. You don't. It may be your right to own your own dental practices, but it's not for everybody. Mm hmm. You know, it really, it really isn't. And, you know, I had this dream, I was going to own 10 practices and all this other stuff. And today, you know, like, I hope that the last, the last two dental offices that I have besides the one I'm here in, you know, I hope, uh, I hope the docs that are in there want to buy it here in the next, you know, couple of years. And uh, I want to be out of it, um, you know, just because it's, uh, uh, that's, that's no longer what I want to do. And, and mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not that great at it. I mean, I, I was successful at it, but uh, like, that's not my passion because, uh, uh, you know, everyone said this before and I've, I've lived it. Um, at some point, you know, multiple offices and stuff like at some point, even, even your own private practice, uh, at some point you have to be the CEO and not a dentist. And many people yeah. have to make that yeah. decision. Like, am I going to run these like a business and be a business person? Or am I going to uh, be a dentist and, uh, and, and, a, and a healthcare provider within my system? And because doing both of them, makes you do either both of them not to the best of your ability. 
Uh, so, I mean, there obviously there's outliers that do both very, very well, and that's that's great. But that's not the, that's not the norm. Dentists are scientists by nature. Like we didn't take any business courses in in college. Uh, uh, you know, and if your dad, you know, my dad was a rancher. I didn't know anything. I, I knew nothing about the business of dentistry. I didn't have a dad or a mom to, to teach me that part. So, um, yeah, you make mistakes and you, and, and you learn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and people blame dental schools. I used to do that too, but not anymore. It's like, it's, it's hard enough to get, to become a dentist and make out of, of out of an undergrad, a really good dentist by the time they graduate. Um, and it's not everybody's route to own a practice. So I used to give dental schools a hard time, but then when I looked at the curriculum, what they're trying to do in those four years, and on top of it, they don't even get sometimes to placing implants and in some of the complicated stuff. Like I think I would much rather as a dentist, while in a dental school, get to learn all those clinical skills and try to learn how to run a practice if I'm not even get there in the next five years, if ever. No, and no, you're exactly right. Uh, and I'll go out on a limb, you know, and 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 I'll be honest. Uh, there was a time where I used to preach like dental schools; they don't give us enough of uh, you know how to become a. And you know what? It's not their job. Exactly. Their job is to create a a, a healthcare clinician. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, I think that if you looked at the curriculum, most dental schools would be better off if they were five years long instead of four. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, and if you wanted to add business side of it, uh, you know, you might even have to add another year. And the reason I say that it's not their job is that dentists are coming out and going to work for someone else. So who says they need to know anything about business? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they need to know how to be a clinician and a good clinician first. And then, you know, the business side, you're either going to have to learn, take some courses, you know, uh, you know, now if you want to make, if you want to make put some business, uh, if you want to put some business prerequisites in dental pre dental school, and and make them do it in undergrad, I'm good with that part. You mm -hmm. know, maybe mm -hmm. there should be six to twelve hours of business courses that they should take along with the science prereqs for dental school. But dental school itself, no place for it. There, yeah. There's no time. Not, not that there's not a place for it. There's no time for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of which, how do you feel about the dental students, especially the D4s that got stuck with this time right now? Oh, God. Um, kind of interesting. I um, I did a podcast. Uh, I, I don't know if we, it was a, more of a Facebook Live type thing with uh, uh, the current ASDA president and the immediate past ASDA president and uh, crazy times for them. Like they're graduating. States are giving them uh, uh, temporary licenses without board exams. Most likely, the board exams are going to be patientless, uh, patientless exams. Um, so, uh, yeah, like there's, uh, geez, there's no uh, uh, those. That part is unprecedented. Yeah, you know, like like that part's never been done before. So, what are they? You know, how are they going to navigate that? Well, you know what. They're going to do whatever they need to do to get a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're graduating at a time where the dental offices are closed. Like, that's crazy shit, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, you know, and the D3s, you know, like, they're kind of like, well, like, we're supposed to be in clinic all summer working on, on requirements to graduate, you know, in a year. And, like, we're not in clinics. So, like, how is that going to work for us? And, like, it will. Because... Right. It's interesting. Uh, people are like, "Wow, well, you know, they, they ought to just hold them all back." You know, it's like, "Well, but you got another crop coming up." You know, like, like there's no, like there, the dental school doesn't have room to have five classes. They only have, you know, D one, two, threes, and fours. Like, can't have a D five. There's no room for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't delay the D ones coming in because there's juniors in college that are stepping up to be like, you know, what I'm saying, like the pipeline. Yeah. The pipeline is completely full like you can't you can't just turn the valve yeah. off and, and and be done you know so you're gonna have to make listen um uh, uh my girlfriend lisa has a uh 18 year old son that is uh um graduating high school by they're mailing his diploma to him 
I mean, think no, I mean, yeah, no it, gowns, it, and whatever that, that celebration. Even, like part of that, I can't even wrap my head around because, uh, like, and he said this the other day, like, haven't seen my. They've been out of school in, in Washington State. They've been out of school since the first of March, basically. Um, they're not going back. So he's been two straight months without seeing his best friends. Some of which, if they don't lift it pretty soon, like, like when is he going to see him? Because he's going off to college, you know, the, the this fall, and uh, there's no, like, you know, his, his his grandparents from across the, you know, from New Jersey. Like, not only can they not fly out, but there's nothing to fly out to. So there's no that there's none of that family gathering that like is important to people, and like, like, like. She has three kids, and one of the three kids she'll have no graduation pictures for. Like, think about that. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. My boys, like, have, they have graduation pictures, and 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 I have a graduation picture, and and my class, and all my buddies, and throwing our hats in the air. Like, there's a, there's going to be one year, like the 2020s, like nothing, mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something else though. I can't. I th- I think like like you said, if you have a pipeline, you can't have a vacuum and things. Like I feel like they will have to come up with something. The, I don't think there's any. If you think about whether you're a high school senior about to come out or a graduating college senior, whether it's undergrad or 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 going into dental school or a dental school graduating, you know, like you've got these these people like they kind of like got the shove in the middle of their back and you're like, Hey, like go fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They will. Cause you Mm -hmm. know what we do? Like it's human. Like we always do. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like like we're not lemmings. Like we're not going to jump off the cliff to our death just because like, there's nothing for us to do. Like, like, like we're going to adapt and overcome and, and, and they will have a different experience than we did. And you know what? The next class behind them will have a little different experience than that. And you could say, oh, well, maybe in a couple of years it'll return to normal. Well, what's normal? Because mm-hmm. yep. you know, everyone in this pipeline, they never knew normal to begin with. So what difference does it make? Yeah. Looks like there's no problem. It's just like, you know, you just have uh, you just have some obstacles and challenges. That's, that's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. I really hope that, again um... – I really hope that somebody, I like I, I saw this whole hashtag going on the the 2020 graduation. Um, I really hope that some of the leaders, and not just in our industry, just in general, some of the leaders in the country, um, like motivational speakers and, and and people like that, they just use that as a positive to deliver the message to say, look, you might be the lucky one actually, that that you are the kind of graduation class and things like that, that now everything is left on your shoulders to figure things out, you know? And if it's, if it's brought up in a positive side, I think that we can have some really incredible leaders specifically out of 2020. You know, listen, they should, uh, uh, they're going to have to be resourceful. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to be uh, uh, intuitive and, you know, they're going to have to scrap and fight for what's out there right now. Like, it, you know, uh, I don't know what, what's unemployment at 10% or like, I'm the last one to check on this numbers. Yeah, I know, but like, yeah. like you know, more than, more than anyone has seen, unless you lived through the great depression, like more yep. than anyone has ever seen since the twenties. So therefore, um, you know, people talk about, you know, people talk about the greatest generation. You know the the, mm-hmm. world war, the World War II generation. Well, you know what? Right before World War II was what the Great Depression. You know, so so are they the greatest generation because they gave to the country like they did during that, or did they start off by being challenged by the Great Depression anyway? You mm-hmm. know. We have this group of people that grew up in the Great Depression, and we got this four-year war that's never been, you know, like 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 they're probably the greatest. Depra- they're probably the, considered the greatest generation because you know what? Like they had no choice but to just get through it mm-hmm. and make the best of it, and they they did a damn good job at it. And maybe we're going to say that maybe seventy years from now they're going to call the the next ge- greatest generation the ones that are graduating right now. Yeah, I hope it's going to be sooner. 
Yeah, because no, I sure. think right now, I yeah, I th- and the only reason is, um, you know how they say like each each downturn in economy, every time you get to it, it's actually the recovery is faster. I was listening to some ec- economists yeah, yeah, about right. this, and so I really think that 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 great generation. I don't know how we got on the standard, but this is like completely not what I wanted to talk about. But since we're on it, you know, I think it's incredibly. I think it would be really awesome to watch the 2020, as just like you said, is the push for people, and we're going to see some 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 sooner, um, you know, than 70 years. But I, I agree with you. Like all this difficulty time, difficult times is actually going to push people harder. And I think from I was just you know talking to one of my buddies, um, you know, maybe they'll have to work not one practice, five practices that are seeing emergencies. Maybe some are going to be free. Like I don't know figure out right right, well listen like no yeah you might you know back to what i said earlier like you're gonna have to go to work you know uh, Mm um you know maybe the you know gone are the 30 like 30 hours a week being a full-time dentist like you may need to work 40 hours a week or 45 hours a week or 50 hours a week yeah to make what you need and you know what i'll do it i mean when i you know growing up when i worked on the ranch um I mean, hell, I had my I had my forty hours in for the week, you know, by like Thursday, you know, yeah. and, uh, and you still have two days to go. <laughs> right, right, yeah, and you know, and sometimes we just work, you know, all seven days a week. And I remember if I wanted if I want to take a trip with my buddies or go somewhere on a on a Saturday or a Friday or whatever, like I remember, you know, I'd I'd get up at four a.m. and turn the lights on the tractor and uh, and and uh, uh, I'd go, uh, you know, twelve hours, fourteen hours, whatever it took to get the job done so that I could have some free time, you know, yeah. like, so there, yeah. was, there was no given there. So, uh, uh, you know, it's you actually, take, it's actually another, that, if you take point. that approach to it, it's like, Hey, listen, like, so you want to, you know, so now you want to go on vacation, which everyone needs it to, to reboot their brains, you know, and, and, and mm-hmm. that, right? um, because listen, so we've had this, this six week vacation and everybody's excited to go back to work just as I am, you know, mm-hmm. Two months from now, you know, how you been? Like, well, I've been working like a dog for like two months. Like, I need a vacation. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, like only, you know, we'll work hard as long as we had off, but it's a different kind of taxing on us and we need to take that vacation. But what may change is like, hey, like, um, instead of being gone for 10 days, we may be gone for five. You know, or a, yeah. or a long weekend vacation, and uh, we may have worked, uh, you know, two fifty-hour weeks ahead of time to make the the room and the and the money to be able to go on vacation. So, you know, those things, uh, you know, those things are how you want to be resourceful. If you, you know, if you think that you're just going to navigate through this like you did uh, six months ago, like <clears throat> I don't think that's maybe the way it's going to go. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I was listening to a podcast on the weekend, um, a big company, Shopify. Um, and it was fascinating. There's their, their publicly traded company and the CEO of the company, he's like, yep. When this whole thing started, I got my team together and I said, anything that you plan prior to this day, garbage, like all these plans that we've put put together, garbage. So we're starting fresh. This is what we're doing. These are the products. And they started launching products. Like there's no tomorrow. And again, back to dentistry, like everything, maybe everything we've had plans and we, had aspirations to do certain things, it's all going to change. And yeah. and who are we to say for good or bad? It's just, it's got to change. That's it. Right. Like we kind of did the same thing here. Uh, you know, those on the creative team, you know, we've worked uh, 40, 50 hour weeks, you know, now, you know, could you take a few hours off, go do nothing? Like for sure. Like, like it wasn't like we went somewhere from eight to five Monday through Friday or Saturday or whatever, but you know, the, 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 the team stayed at work, you know, and I stayed paying them because I used this. I, I, I told you last time, like, I think this is going to be a lot of opportunity. And I said the same thing. If you've got vacations planned for this summer, like you can probably erase that from your whiteboard, like, like, uh, because it's going to go back to work and everybody's going to want to work and want to work and want to work. And, you know, you have just had six weeks off, mm-hmm. you know, but you're gonna need some time later. You know, you got to You've got to have that 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 reboot phase. So, uh, but it's gonna be completely. 
it's going to be completely different. You know, like I, I, I told him, I said, I know you've requested, you know, two weeks off in August to take your kid to college and things like that. Uh, you know, you need to reassess that and say, hey, you know, can you get him to college in four days? You know, mm-hmm. you know and, uh, you know, or do you need five because you now you're going to drive them instead of fly them? I mean, there's changes. The world, you know, the world has changed and it's, you know, good, bad or better, you know, worse, whatever it is. Like, it's just different now. So, like, figure it out and, um, uh, you know, reboot and move on. You're right. Like, yeah. it's, like it's, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so as we're just wrapping up, what are, you know, we talked about the positive, the things that you've seen, um, how the team came back and everybody wants to work. And, and it's inspiring to see how, you know, everybody just want to be back and they want to hug it out and, and go for it. What are the things that you think are going to happen in the next two to four weeks as you see offices are coming back that are going to be maybe not necessarily inspiring, but maybe inspiring on a small scale. But where, what do you think that dentistry as an industry is going to like, I don't want to say step up, but, but get to the next level. Well, I think that, um, I think the next level is giving back, you know, um, you know, there are people that, there are people that have navigated through this that are in better position than they were before. Um, and that's, that seems, uh, you know, to be like, well, how could that be? Well, you know, um, there's still a lot of independently owned grocery stores that have done very, very well. You know, uh, shipping companies, uh, truck drivers, uh, um, you know, whatever they considered essential services, you know, like, you know, Walmart employees getting overtime, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Costco, uh, uh, Safeways, Albertsons, you know, that like there's a, there is a, what we have to remember is there's, there are people within this workforce that the times have been really, really good. You know, like, like the rest of the, everything has really gone to hell, but like there are people that have been busy and been making money and, 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 and have been good and, and don't cut them down. Like they're, they're, they're good. And then there's a lot of people that I feel for, I feel for the one, two, three person, uh, the little construction crew that builds custom homes or the uh, like my cousin in Southern Washington that has a, as a, as a, as a one chair beauty salon and uh, like, like, man, you know, they're considered non-essential that these PPP loans and stuff don't, you know, that they don't fit in that. Like there's, there's some sad stories and you know what? Um, uh, Well, I'll, you know, she's my cousin, so I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, uh, I got a sixteen hundred dollar haircut last Wednesday, and uh, you know, I, I was getting pretty shaggy. Um, sixteen hundred dollar. Well, I'm going to tell you how. Uh, my so my cousin, you know, she needed a, I, you know, she needed a dental implant, and I just told her, I said, "Hey, come to the office, cut my hair. I'll give you the, you know, I'll put the dental implant in." And she's like. Mm-hmm. What? And I was like, yeah, I'm happy to pay it. You know, the Mm -hmm. the matter is, is that, you know, whatever, you know, it was my time, which I wasn't doing anything with. And, uh, you know, the price of the implant, I mean, really, I mean, by haircut, by haircut, you know, a couple hundred dollar haircut is still pretty kind of an expensive haircut, but like, you know, full retail 16, uh, you know, like, yeah, yeah, makes a good tagline, you know, but I bartered my way to getting a haircut. And I, I, I lent my service. She lent her service. You know, both services were, you know, prohibited, you know, at the, at yeah. the time we did them. Well, like, she's my second cousin. And you know what? Like, she's not turning me and I ain't turning her in. And, like, nobody's listening to this podcast. It's going to turn us in either. So, like, you know, and, and, and I'd like to, I'd like, and I'd like to find a jury of my peers that are going to take my dental license because I traded an implant for a, for a, for for a, a few people that were perfectly healthy. Like, come on. Leave it alone. Yeah. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so one day I'm going to have a podcast about my $1,600 haircut. So, uh, um, and then we're going to say the news, you know, like it makes a good uh, clickbait. That's right. That's right. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to have my, I got to have my tagline get you to, uh, to listen to my uh, podcast. You know, the, 
Yeah. Hell, I'll probably even inflate it. I'll be like the ten thousand dollar haircut. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell my team not to make a micro content out of it. So uh, we'll yeah. leave that for you so that you can do that yourself moving forward. Oh, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. No, but it's it's true what you said. You know, one of the things that I've seen people do, uh, including my friends too, if we couldn't get the haircut, we just called our hair salon and, and we just gave a credit card for that month, even though we didn't get the haircut. You know, like things like that I've seen a lot. And I can tell you coming from a different country, I've seen that more in this country. Uh, than others. And, um, you know, it's just it's just the human nature of trying to help each other. And I agree with you that I think if we look at it from a positive standpoint, there's going to be a much better good than than some of the, you know, uh, the little spikes of negativity. And and I want to come back to that, what you said about giving back. So how do you see dentistry stepping up in, in giving back? Yeah, I think that uh, I think you, I think dentist off, dental offices are going to have a lot of people that are going to walk in their doors over the, the the next months that are going to walk in and they have a flipping toothache and they just don't have any money to pay you and they don't have a credit card or it's maxed out because they've been buying their groceries on the credit card when they didn't have a job and you know what I think dentistry is going to step up and I'm going to be like you know what let's we got to get your tooth fixed like yeah. like. Like I'm gonna fix your tooth, okay? You know, and yeah. uh, you know, I'm not put a crown on it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fix your tooth, put a core buildup in it, or whatever, get you down, you know, be able to get down the road to get you, you know, something else. But like that's stepping up because you know what? Like I don't think people realize that something as simple as getting their tooth out of pain, like for me, like I wanted a haircut. She needed to have this 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 done, and 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 we worked that out, and. Uh, uh, you know, money wise, like, yeah, it was a bigger donation for me to the other side, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, my, my cousin was eternally grateful for getting that service done. And at a time where like, she has no idea when she was going to be able to afford that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the world's going to be full of those stories, Tiger. Like there's going to be a lot of people that are going to come up and say, I'm still on furlough, you know, like, you know, all those planes that are parked on that, on that, uh, 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 runway here in Phoenix, you know, what happens to the employees, there's, there's pilots, there's flight attendants, there's maintenance, there's ramp workers, yeah. there's, there's uh, uh check-in, like, like there's a lot of people that they've trimmed, trimmed to a 10 or 20% deal. Well, all those people are on furlough, you know, and uh, uh, there's, and that's just one industry. You know, if you think about like the cascade, like, you know, the hotels, you know, there's nobody staying in hotels. There's nobody flying. So therefore nobody's renting cars. So Hertz and Avis and national, like they're all like, like, like that. It's not a trickle down. Like it's, it's a di direct lineation between those. Yeah. And there's a lot of people there that have different scenarios that are hurting. And I think dentistry, if we can step up and either do some of these things um, at a very reasonable rate or donate your time and, and, and do some things that will come back to you in your practice. I promise you, you may not think that that, that giving back thing is going to do it, but uh, it's going to do it because, you know, they're going to tell their friends and their family. And when they're ready to go to the dentist, like they're going to just do the right thing, you know, like be a human, be a good mm -hmm. human. Mm hmm just be a good human. Yeah. It's not, it's not that hard. Yeah. That's a good point. And for offices that are trying to build a criteria, how to qualify, what would you recommend? I don't know. I don't know about qualify. You know I mean? Like um, someone walks in your office and they got a hole in their tooth and it's killing them and they can't eat or sleep or whatever. Like uh, if they tell you they don't have any money, like they don't have any money. Like, I mean, like, what are you going to do? Like it either, you know, most people are good tiger. Like they, they exactly. are, like, exactly. like, you know, would someone try to scam you once in a while? Yeah, probably, you know, but like, listen, like most people are good. Like I, I think it takes a lot of courage to go to the dentist to, to begin with. And then it takes even more courage to go to the dentist when you don't have any money. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, you know, it's shameful and it's in a, in a, in and you know it's degrading and if we can make them feel better about it and just come in like then just just take care of them you know or or you know and you don't even necessarily have to do it for free maybe you do it for free that day but you're just like hey listen uh, uh i'm gonna fix your tooth 
and you're going to get a bill from me each each month because it's in my system. But uh, what you need to know is like, I'm not turning you over to a collection agency. I'm not like I'm I'm here and all and 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 when you can pay me, pay me. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not even doing it for free. You're just delaying it, like. What does that hurt? Like, like I, I, just, I, I just don't see, you know, because uh, you know, you as a business owner, you know, and I use the same thing, you know. Here, uh, I asked for my landlord to uh, give me a few months relief, you know, so that I could have my business reopen. My landlord said, "I'm going to defer your payment for four months." And I was like, "They didn't have to do that," you know, and then. Um, uh, we actually got our PPP loan uh, prior to the end of April. I paid him April and I paid him May, and I and it's going to work out where I'm going to be able to pay him in June as well. And my and I just want my landlord to say, listen, like like I got this. You're getting paid, and and uh, uh, they were eternally grateful for me, you know, and and um, because it's uh, going to help him help the other guy who can't make the payment. So the universe that, that it is like that in like. The, the landlord of this of, the, of this complex owes money on this building, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, who knows if they have cash reserves or if they had to go to the bank and ask for them to not, you know, like, like whatever that is, but like stopping that negative cascade and saying, Hey, I'm going to pay this. And now all of a sudden my landlord can pay Chase back for, you know, whoever they, for their mortgage on the building. And now all of a sudden Chase has money back again that they can relend to people like, 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 it's it's pushing it's it's sending it back the other direction in a positive way mm-hmm. like it's it's i'm i am no expert on it on economics or the economy but uh i do know that that's a good that's good for both exactly exactly um i love your perspective this is always refreshing to listen to you and and for those of you that say easy for you to say i think that you know you've been through so many challenges and the story that you said about Denver, I mean, you and I talked about this over a drink extensively. Here, we didn't do the justice but in five minutes to tell the story. I, I hope at some point we'll be able to bring you back and just talk about all the all the, the downsides of it and how did you overcome that and were able to come right. off of it. I would love to get that story to people at some yeah, point. I know that there's some people that look at this and say, ah, you know, like he's, you know, he's done fine. You know, listen, like, like all those past the past has been instructive to me and the instructive part was like prior to this, I had lines of credit that were lined up for my, for my businesses Mm -hmm. and I have a personal savings account and I have my retirement accounts. And the truth is, is that this could drag on for quite some time before I would ever lose my house or anything like that. Now, not that I want to spend all that, 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 you know that that but i but i have it and i only have it because i lived through times like this where i wasn't prepared and i didn't have those things and i had to be resourceful so uh uh that's the that's the learning part of it so um yeah i've screwed up a lot of shit and lost a lot of money for the years, uh, and uh i'd be happy to tell you about it because uh, i used to be scared about telling it you know and and now you know you look at uh you know, many of the many of the entrepreneurs and people that have you know big businesses, um, you know, they failed multiple times before they before they got it right, and there's no shame in that. Mm-hmm. There's no dishonor in it. You know, if you did something shady, you know, yeah. like if you, if you screwed someone along the way or whatever, like that's not the same. But like uh, if you navigated the thing and it just didn't work, it just didn't work. Um, mm-hmm. And if you can reinvent yourself in a way that it makes it work, then you know, kudos to you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I love your wisdom. I really hope people watch it, listen to it. And uh, especially I'm really hoping the the younger dentists that that are that haven't lived through even 2008. So this is their first, quote unquote, the recession or whatever that's going to look like. I really hope people listen to it. I'm certainly taking notes and I'm, you know, we all know things come back and it's always a cycle. So to get ready for the next one. Um, I really appreciate it, and I really hope to bring you back at some point to talk some more. Ah, anytime, my friend. Uh, I always uh, always like talking to you, and I can't wait to share a, a cocktail with you next time you're down in Phoenix. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome. All right. That would be awesome. Thank you, Justin. I really appreciate right, yeah. it. Yeah, take uh, care, my friend.
Thank you all for watching.